I am a minute late. I'm sorry. I said 6 p.m. It's one minute past six. Guess what? Uh, I I wanted to prep everything, and then Windows decided, hey, I have an update. Do you want to install now? Oh, I'm installing it anyway without asking you. <sighs> breeze in. Breeze out. Ignore that Windows is trying to kill kill you. So instead... Let's do some coding to quiet the mind. And yesterday, oh man, we had such a super, super good session. I mean, we did we did all this, and I'm just gonna copy this down. Um, it's on the usual Git repository, so this list is getting long. This list is getting long. I mean, this was just the quick hack as a as a goal of the stream thing, and um. So yesterday was a very long stream. I'm a bit tired, and no, I'm not tired. Let's let's go for it. Um, maybe I'm a bit weird, but I'm always a bit weird. So I decided uh, let's stick with the stream title and say, um, look, remember we did this this hacky goal. This hacky copy thing here, where the old Packer script has this verbatim copy of of assets, and we kind of couldn't do this, so that's the only reason why the Pack Atlas is is not fully fully compatible. So step one, let's implement a copy for the asset builder build build build. Builder, build, asset builder, could we call it asset builder for the asset tool thingy? And then then also we had this ugly, hey, look here, this is your output. And um, actually the driver install might have helped the Windows flickering problem, so so I'm gonna I'm gonna live with that for the moment. So I do want to format that output better. Improve output formatting. And then as a bonus right now, we ignore the return code. Um, at least output the return code for now. Output return code of tools, of external code tools. And and then I'm pretty sure we'll find some stuff um, that that we <coughs> that we can work on once we did that. So let's start slow. Be to totally confused as you as usual. Monday, no coffee day. So warm up by just just doing the usual stuff, which in our case is. Uh, and yeah, I have some stuff open in the background, ignore that. Which is um make sure all our git stuff is up to date. So usually when I start new stuff I do a git fetch, git rebase, check everything's still building and obviously this is the case, so let's go right here and do the cargo run so everything is still working. And nice. Nice. So let's dive straight into the copy copy thingy. And we're going to go into the project here. Nope, that's Xcode. We're going to go into the project here. And actually, let's, let's do a, let's do a, we want this copy here, so we want to copy something from the content directory to the data directory. Let let's just see how we would do this. And and I'm gonna do a so the tool is is I guess asset because it's asset internal. The command will be copy. Copy is the output. And here we can 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 get a bit fancy, so so leave leave this open. And the input is um, and the input is let let's just let's just say 
Content, touch, um, content, copy, test, test.txt. So that's, that's our, that's what we want to copy, right? So we want to um, copy test dot txt and then parameters wait what did i parameters for now just leave them empty and the command line actually is is also empty so to do actually uh actually allow Om omitting empty parameters and then also actually let's flag that to do allow omitting empty un unneeded command command line for now it I don't want to open too many cans of worms, so let's just say, okay, it's empty, and then um, what I'm actually wanting to do as kind of a bonus is, um, whoa, you're back again, hey, glad to have you, didn't see you coming, <laughs> how's life? Yeah, we're just warming up, so so let's see. So if we look into how it's really used, we 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 have three copies here. So so let's just create a copy test too. And what we could do is obviously we can just copy this whole thing, and that will do. And probably that's step one. So copy test two, and then. This is just um, the same in the output directory. Copy test two, and here we have copy test, and and obviously where I'm going is I want this to be smarter, so I can, so in the future I can just uh, put this here, and say copy all of them. I don't care. We don't need the output name. So, but but for today, that's that's the start we're gonna work on. You guys have too much time to actually watch me do this. So, so so far so good. Obviously, the the copy command is not working, and and that's that should be pretty straightforward. I mean, we know where to do it. We have the hmm. That's gonna get interesting. So basically, we could just just say copy here. We we put all the infrastructure in place. So compile it, run it. Copy done. I mean, copy not done. So my thing is, um, I guess in this case we want to do kind of. This this command line. Well, we don't have a command line, so we're probably fine. So what we're probably gonna do is um, print line, copying source equals tool run input, and, and we're just gonna take the first one here and dest equals uh, tool run dot output. Copying to and copy step will be implemented. Let's just output output the idea of this. Um, source test. Mm, obviously, we just want to borrow this here because we don't need to copy. So copying copy test txt to and and now it's getting interesting because we set all those relative uh, 
pass names so so this should probably say copying content copy test.txt to to so copying from content to data directory so we need to prefix this i mean not, nothing easier than that right we just do format format um prefix slash postfix and and actually we're just gonna so whatever the prefix is to be defined and then the po and now we probably get away without borrowing here so copying something slash so what what is a prefix our prefix is the data directory and since we were very smart we just threw all of that away here it just hmm. Hmm. actually we threw it away uh, here so we pass it all in we do all this stuff here and then here we call the as a tool with a tool run but not the other parameters so i want to remember when we put all the parameters into this tool run struct to pass one single thing and not five gazillion things so we're gonna do the same for sorry if i'm scrolling too fast we're gonna do the same here for the for this stuff here so we just just hand over one parameter i'm just gonna steal this because I, I i like this so we have a struct uh, shall we call it asset build we, we clean up we, we'll do one round of, of naming stuff correctly so and obviously all of these are now real things And then obviously I want to do the, I'm not sure if this, this is really the rusty thing to do, but I like kind of constructors for stuff. So, so basically we do what we did here. So we say we return an asset build. I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a idiomatic way of doing this, but, <coughs> and probably in rust, you would put the brace here. <gasps> Let's stick with it for the moment. So we pass in all this stuff and obviously all this stuff is, and, and I guess in, in Rust we pass in actually this for flexibility reasons. And that's still on the list to be evaluated. But let, let's just let's just keep it simple and then we just return an asset build that has basically all this in it, in it but we want want copies that we can keep so we we basically we basically um we can clone all of these and let my ocd kick in but da some people will kill me for doing this, but I don't care. I I like nicely lined up code. Because I have to, my day-to-day -day job, I have to read so much code. And every time my eye doesn't have to have to travel kind of left, right. Uh, that makes my life so much easier. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm not sure why I have. Okay. So this is just just the the struct to to contain the data, and then now we have to let let's just quickly. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, obviously we're not cloning the type; we're cloning the past. So there's a bit of name duplication going on here. So the left hand side is what's actually in the struct. So this is this here, and this is what we passed in. Maybe I should. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. 
Maybe. Maybe the compiler is right sometimes. So we have it all. We have a constructor for this asset build thingy. And, and I actually want to say, okay, um, here let asset build. And I'm, I'm going to be lazy equals asset build new. And then I'm just going to gonna pass in all of these and I hope the order is identical let's check so this is the order and if the naming is identical we can just cut and paste so here I'm, I'm just gonna pass this in so content directory data directory temp directory archive and then I'm gonna remove all of all of these Got any plans for, for the big party tomorrow? Well, I'm gonna catch some sleep. So now everything is in here and what we obviously, um, it's in here and then we just, just borrow the whole block thingy. Obviously we have to, to, go, to, to go to the build command and uh, now we have a uh, asset build, and probably it's more like a like a asset build config. So here, ev everything obviously now needs to depack it, but so this is a content directory. I wish the compiler would help me. Let's let's see. The compiler will help me. So line three three two Y down there. Yeah, and obviously um we have to borrow all of these. Yes, you're right, my lord. Okay. Well, that seemed to be a to have gone well. So what we can do with that now, um, I mean, this is the build and somewhere down here, we call the actual tool. And what I want to put in is the asset build info as a first parameter. So basically, um, basically, this part here, just pass it down so we, and this is so much easier than to pass down like 15 gazillion. Uh, oh. Obviously this was, a, this was the wrong one. This is the external one. And yes, we will extend that as well. But let's put it into switching platforms. So, we just pass it through, and now the nice thing is, and, and I'm danger, I'm doing, doing pass directory combining conversion via string functions here. Uh, not a smart idea, but we're not smart people, so um, let's just see what happens. What? Oh. And obviously this is not correct. I mean, this looks correct. Copy from data, but actually, and it's not the data directory, it's the content directory that we want to copy from. This looks correct. But it's not because technically we don't want the we don't want the past in content directory. We want the the location of the of the YAML file. We want relative to this. And mm, mm, 
not sure yet. Let's work with this. So let's put it to do here. Content directory is not correct. It should be the directory of the asset config file. But for now, let's just cheat and, and destination is a bit easier because destination actually is the output. And then if you, if you look at this here, it is the... Hmm, It could be temp, it could be data, but in this case it is a data direct data directory. So this is this is part one. Why why is the heating always kicking in when when I start streaming? Oh maybe it's the lights. Oh well, LED lights shouldn't give up some so much heat, so it's probably the heating that just kicks in at this time. So copying content to data. Yay! -ish. Well, it's saying it's copying, but it's not actually copying. So do we want to do the actual copy first or the... Let's do the actual copying first, because right now if I do... this, uh, it's not there. So let's do the actual copying. And Rust copy file, should be easy. Standard file system copy. Copies the contents of one file to another. This sounds too easy. So, Reuse standard FS. Use standard FS. And then we just say file system copy source to test. Right? Fair. Oh, we're doing, we're doing. We are mixing and matching uh, braces. Well, <clears throat> oh, now that I see it, do you see it here? No space, space, no space, space, no space, all, all everywhere. Oh, let's clean, clean this up. And then what does it return? What does copy return? It returns a result. On success, the total number of bytes copied is returned. So, yeah, that's cool. So I would say we match this and say, if we get an OK bytes, we say, we say print line, print line, copy, copied bytes from from A to clear winner is the one who can type, so and then we just return an OK. No, the comma goes here. Or we probably get an error. E, and in that case, we just uh... oh, it's an error. It's not an error. Error while copying. Copying. And then we can. So if we run this again.
obviously this is the point where rust can get a bit annoying with its borrowing but it's right borrow of moved value in line 119 oh so here we want to borrow So copied zero bytes. Well, it copied zero bytes. Uh, let's let's fix the content to. This is a test file for copying. And now let's do this again. And it's at uh, copied thirty two bytes, which looks looks about right. And if I intentionally uh, give it a file that does not exist, then it probably will say copying. And we're not outputting the error. OK, fine. And we just say, in this case, error copying actually then this is a bit much we don't need the we're trying we succeeded we failed we just do this succeeded or failed hmm. argument never used okay you're right and i'm doing the spaces thing again i'm i'm slobby today so error copying data so that works so the copying itself works which is nice but the the directories are not correct let's just I don't know. Test directory. And then actually I want to copy the content. Copy. Is it being too loud? Copy the test. Oh. Copy. Maybe I should switch switch to Visual Bell test directory, and then uh, in the test directory. So we're getting to the point where the actual test data, and we can remove all of this. We just want the. We just use the copy test two here. And then we also copy the content. Uh, copy test to to content test directory copy test subter and actually use this because because in theory we said input file names are relative to <coughs> to their config file so obviously it's uh, error copying this and and let's let's just fix the file name real quick here it found the file it tried to copy it but this this file does not exist so <coughs> hmm And it tries to call the command line. Hmm. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Actually, I want to add one more print. Let's add one more print to the loop down here. What's actually... 
let's actually here. So we see which config file something is coming from. So this is the subdirectory. Okay, this is the this is the this here and uh, yeah. Ignore me for the moment. Okay, so this is fine, but this uh, this is a test case for subdirectory handling is not working because it's it's not relative. And we want it to be relative. I totally love Rust. I, I've been coding in, I don't know, 30 different languages over the last 40 years. And and I, I'm i lousy at Rust, but the, the concept and principles uh, are getting much better. And I kind of, in the last few months, it's been, been more stable. I tried it last year and every week a new update came and the whole paradigm shifted. So... It's stabilizing and, and it's creating super, super tiny binaries, which makes me super happy because having a hello world and six gigabyte is just, just not going to fly. So, yeah, Rust is very good. Um, so, and the thing is, we know the config file, and I'm pretty sure that. Uh, standard file system probably pass has a if i just go to the pass documentation and and my list of tabs here is getting longer but but basically oh it's not flickering anymore so i can show you and i'm pretty sure that pass has a um, components which is a start uh, but probably we want the the parent Probably we want exactly this. <coughs> so the question is, um, so down here we pass in the tool run, and if you look into the tool run, this sounds like the natural place to put more. I mean, mm, Actually, I think the the inputs that we put in here should all already be cleaned up. So remember, we do the here we do this ugly block of uh, do something with the input, and this is actually this is actually I. Mean, We can so okay. We're gonna gonna this this is input, right? Is it input or inputs? We talked about it's input, and then we just say okay one. Just just checking out super early just to see what I. Oh, we want to check in out. So this is the input, and I think this should already be fixed to be relative to this. So what we want to do is right here. <coughs> right af after we load it, not before, after we load it. Uh, we say let's... Let asset pass equal, and then we just do the um, so let config file pass pass new, and and that's actually the config file. Th this actually is a pass, and probably we should before opening it, but. Good enough for me. And then this is actually config file pass dot parent. And that's basically we're gonna be easy unwrap or nothing. Right? So we can print this out. 
asset pass is maybe that is a debug micro for dump this variable including this name and obviously we have to use standard standard use standard pass pass it's just the include and yeah i did some c coding this morning so all my all my natural instincts for borrowing are gone again so we want to borrow this here oh otherwise we just create a pass new and and we already have error handling on the list for for hey hey do this right don't don't value borrowed here after move and yes so now we are realizing that this here should, should have been a borrow So the asset path, this is the directory we want. So all we have to do is whenever we put something into the input list, we fix it up first, or we just say let input equal input. Uh, can, can we just map this? Still struggling with with Rust a bit here. Will this work? Doing this blind. Do we have to iterate here? Mm-hmm. And then at the end of it, obviously, we collect it back. Wait, what? So it's telling us that we somehow messed up the type. But shouldn't this be a vector of string? Okay, maybe I should read the Rust documentation. Rust map vector of string. Oh, we did this before, remember? Not here. Not here, here. We have to tell the collect what it's actually collecting into. So let's tell the collect what it's actually collecting into, and then we don't have to tell it the type here. Right? And obviously we are cloning here. We, we won't be cloning here, we will be formatting, but okay, so now we didn't change anything. We just mapped everything to itself, but what we actually want to do is we want to map to format and then something to I. So again, this, this is just identical mapping. And then we actually want to prefix it with. Um, we're going to make one change up here. So we default to the current directory, then we can use this, use a slash. And here we actually going to use the asset pass. So all of them should be. Really? Oops. So now our input is prefixed with the correct uh, 
thingy here. And if we just for test testing purposes, uh, uh, yeah, it's nice that's the same, but if you put a second one here, which is not supported yet, but then then all the inputs are fixed. So so this is nice. This is what we want. Not sure why I opened this. Um, and yeah, this this is just debug. Leave it here. So and and kill this with fire. And now every <laughs> we have to be careful now because remember yesterday we fixed fish to ignore the fact to 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 fix the fact that the pass is not correct. So we need to unfix the fix now. And now it's saying okay. Now we don't have to add the data directory anymore. It's kind of works in this case, but um, we don't want to fix the data directory anymore because the input, at least not on the input, so this here. So this here will just be, technically we don't even have to do this. This will just be tool run input zero and and yes we need to implement multi input handling but and we are borrowing it oh wait we're not borrowing it we're cloning it deep copies for the win so if you look at this now um, we are copy copy copying from from wherever to the right directory and down here we're doing the right thing too so this still doesn't do multi-copy but uh, i'm not sure if i want to support this at this moment let's let's put um what we accidentally did um fix focus fix relative asset input file names we we kind of kind of did this so should, we should document it and and i'm tempted to just copy the target debug asset to my bin directory and obviously now the fish build here will just fall completely apart. So we just drag the, let's just, yeah. Because all the input names here are broken. So if we, if we open, if we go to, to the fish config and say, okay, let's let's switch to the single layout here and make this a bit smaller yeah I, I don't know why i keep hitting the files there so if we go to the gui asset config remember we added the pass here explicitly and now we can just say hey this directory so so we, we just fixed uh this case here, so let's just rerun it and hmm? oh that's the def, so this looks better and actually this here, this is the output we want to fix today, also looks better. So we we can go through all the assets now and say, okay. Uh, here we have to cheat a bit because uh This is outside of the content tree, and remember we tell it, hey, look into the content. So this file is in content, but the assets are parallel. So so we let let's cheat here a bit. Uh, here, this file is in content, so everything is relative to content. Nice. The shop. Uh, 
is in content, so this is relative to, and we could probably put them all into one config file, but we said we didn't want to, and same here, this is in GUI, so, so this is relative as well. And I guess we caught all five of them. So, I'm, I'm, I, I just, just say Atlas, Atlas star. So our data directory now is uh, five megabyte. And if I run this whole thing, it, it will take a while. And now we should be back at our mm, 19 megabytes. So something is broken. And not, it would be nice now if the formatting was better. So we could actually see what is broken because here I'm not going to find where I messed up. I might find it here because I know what's close. I know what the data directory should look like and all the Atlas files. So it just created one game Atlas. It should have created two. GUI Atlas 2 is fine. The GUI Dev Atlas is not here. So the game Atlas, this should be at least, this doesn't fit into one file. I mean, it has to have the fish, the coins, the... Oh, okay, by the looks of it. It managed to pack them all into one. Okay, so GUI Atlas is two, obviously, because the panels are pretty, pretty big. So it's fitting one into this and then then all the buttons into the other one. And these black bars are intentional for texture stretching compensation. Um, but where's the GUI Dev Atlas? Remember where is uh wrong where is where is this GUI Dev Atlas GUI underscore dev Shop Atlas Seaweed Atlas GUI Dev Atlas Creating atlases from textures. No updates. Because... Oh, there's a GUI GUI here. Oh! So, there's a GUI here, so... <coughs> My bad. That's why we script this. Looks better now. And the GUI Dev Atlas appeared here, which is just the debug UI buttons, which are super ugly. They're intentionally ugly, so they stick out, so we don't ac accidentally ship them. So, so we have the GUI Dev. We have the We don't have the shop atlas, do we? Oh, it's just down here. I just missed it because it's down here. Okay, we do have the shop. That works. And the shop is not implemented yet. We have the game atlas. We saw that. We have the marketing overlays, do we? We don't. So probably the relative pass thing here is not really working. I wish we could tell 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 this thing, hey, th this is the command line I give you, but instead of searching for files, just use this specific one. I mean, we... So, so, probably what I want to do is say config file and then say content, uh, marketing assets and then just don't search for it just 
use that. Ooh. Let's put that on the to-do list. Uh, add para, para, optional, parameter to asset tool to allow converting only specific config file. This would come super handy in this case, but let's not get sidetracked. And so the assets, so it's not this one. It's not this one. It's not this one. It's definitely not this one, but. Oh, <laughs> see this here? Yeah, me too. So let's open content and close all the subdirectories here. So this here should be a dot, right? Because it's looking for the dot asset config dot yaml and 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 actually you can see now it's doing it. And by the looks of it, exit status is zero. So, oh wait, that's a shop. It tricked me. Here are the marketing assets and it's doing its magic. And yes, it's converting. So if you look into the data directory now, we should have the marketing overlays. Which is, if, if you look back a few episodes, that's the stuff we use to do the screenshots from within the game. Nice, this is going places. So this this is working. So I, I would say, um, mm, we fixed this by accident. I'm not saying the copy is done yet. The, the copy is still a bit, um, mm -hmm. what did I do? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> New keyboard macros uh, need to get used to them a bit. So, so drawing a blank. Throw it away, burn it with fire. Um, actually, is, is this all we want? Is this good enough for the copy? I mean, obviously we could say, okay, we want uh We want a nice emoji for success, so check. So we can just put this here and then we say fail. Mm. Red, 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 red. What do we use for copy failure this? You could use the broken heart, but my heart is too broken anyway. So let's put this here. It's, we started adding this emoji very late to the tools, but then figured out it, it so helps the readability here. So if I go back here and just run the cargo thing. Didn't, uh, may, may, maybe it helps saving. Maybe it does help saving before running, but instantly between this text garbage, you see, hey, this is the important line and green green kind of says it's good. And and if you look here, all the other tools also basically say, um, so there is kind of a seam to it, which I forgot. So, so basically if, 
if we look at the let's close this if we look at the pack scripts if we look at the pack scripts down here so the atlas is using using this this folder image thingy as the recognizable value and the config and the config is not done the font convert the scripts is using this hey i'm i'm okay we use a double the double red okay fine we can do this and then it's this is a symbol for script so probably we need a symbol for i i want to prefix it with a folder as well because the folder is a symbol for something as a tool and then then all i'm missing is something to say hey it's uh shaders is, doesn't do it yet shapes doesn't do it sounds doesn't do it uh, so it, it was a start but it it helped the readability already a lot if, if you remember the let's pull this up a bit this was a script we used to run from the start so this this indentation and formatting already helps helps a lot yeah this is just whoops can you just go to the end thank you i shouldn't have done the font refonting thingy but hey no more flickering on the stream when i have lots of data on the screen a and yeah then then oh yeah we had that lua error we we, we know and then this is basically pack file stuff we should probably add that to the packer as well. And yeah, it, it just helps to, to quickly find what you're looking for. So so I want to keep doing that and and then probably here it should say X assets build. So if I go here And we set the assets thingy as the folder. And that's the green case as well. And I'm not sure if I want to double up the... This is the green case. I hope I copied that. That was too much. Copy it, just that, yeah. And then we obviously have the acid arrow here, but also with this here. And then, then up here, I kind of want to, this is one level higher, so there should be one symbol in between here. But I don't know what the what the generic symbol for asset tool is. Tool? Tool. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Do we just want to use this one here? Where's my cursor? Living. And this will probably look super ugly on all other platforms, but so an asset tool, asset tool, success, success. So, yeah, this is starting to look better, and we're slowly going into improved output formatting here. So I, I would say the implement copy for the asset builder is is done. And I'm actually gonna gonna commit this. So this is uh, the we added uh, copy. We added this is this is the code we did. 
and then I want to also add the copy test, the copy test to, and the test directory copy test subder. And then we say um, <coughs> edit copy tool to asset copy command. To asset tool, right? And again, this is all on the usual website as soon as I push it. <coughs> I'm gonna use a minute, grab a fresh, some fresh water, and then we do the formatting, right? Okay. Yeah, grab some fresh water, he said, and then he uh, goes and grabs the ginger ale. Mm, somehow this whole Christmas thing got me hooked on the whole sugar stuff again, and I, I'm... Ah. Yeah, and I'm drinking out of plastic cups. Well, I'm drinking out of exactly this one plastic cup, because it's the only one I have right now. I still haven't found the glasses while after moving, so... Should probably be diving in the basement in boxes, but... Yeah. So the thing is, the thing is, we have this. Oh, let's run this. So we have this output right now, and we want this. And I'm not going to create a test case for this output, so I'm going to cheat and say. What's what's the pass name on this one? OMT experiments, okay. And it's three and it's acid and it's card target debug acid. So we can test it on the on the actual data from here. And I'm not sure if I, I, I could just fix up this. But do I want to? I mean, actually, we could just just say, okay, uh, go two up. Nope, not the packet directory. Go go another one up, then go into fish, and then just use the content there. Yeah, I mean that that will totally blow up our data directory because the build is not working. So I, I I'm cheating a bit here. And just copy the build atlas script over here. Because that's what it's trying to run, right? Yeah. So we can test from our Rust development directory and don't have to constantly copy it over. So, I mean, I see the formatting code here. So it can't be that far away from being formatted output. So I guess it's just uh, so we have this external cool tool here, and and probably it's it's just this. Maybe maybe that's maybe that is all because we tell it no. So. I'm wondering if this actually is a verbatim
I mean, we, we know how to map this, right? So we can say, let output equals output dot iterator dot map. And then we just say, then we just say, hmm, nah. Nah, I could just say let output. I, I want to test something here. I just want to see the test case is too big, but okay, so so escape characters in output work. So it looks like this here is already eating the, eating the formatting. So um, still doing um, safety net for friends who are alone over Christmas. So sorry about the messages coming in, but that's important. Mm. So we have this uh, command new. So Rust command. So it's standard process command, and we we looked briefly into this is too big for this screen. Briefly into this the last time. So I'm gonna gonna keep keep looking. I, I just need to keep some order here in my windows, otherwise I drown in them. So, defaults to piped. So yeah, it's piping this. Okay, this this is not So so the documentation does Ouch. The documentation does this. So we used output as a string and so what we should do is we match the output and I don't know why I keep doing this. So here it says the result is either okay or an error. So error e and in this case let, let's just be lazy and say okay if we get an error we just arrow out and in the okay case we get the then we actually get a standard process output so this is actually the output this is the output result so and here we do um, let's just print this here and act actually we handled the error so we can just remove this here oh we we really need to switch our error handling to errors instead of strings
error running external command. We are not outputting this anywhere, but so this formatting. I mean, this 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 formatting is is broken, and we know that. But that's the script. Oh, this is. But this here is is nice now. So. His window is too small. So where's the where's the actual calling output? And I actually want to add a new line here. So yeah. So I wonder. This is this is a standard output. So let's quickly check the documentation. So the output has an exit status, which is which is cool. I mean <coughs> the exit code, it has standard out and standard error. So so probably we could just do error. Just just in case some tools and and we're gonna gonna rename this to to be more clear. I mean, some tools might have error output, which might be interesting for reasons. I don't think the build scripts have. Yeah, get a drink and don't drink it. And actually, we have the exit status, so... So, exit status, and that we want in the same line. So just uh, output dot x. It's it's status, and I I return code. Yep, my bad. Hmm. So it's actually so exit status. What type is that? Exit status actually is a has a code so it's it's dot code <coughs> oh mm. on on or too much error handling in one day. Okay, so we got error code zero. So so we did um, this here, and I'm kind of ah uh, this here, and I'm kind of okay with the, with the output formatting for now. So this went well. This went really well. I mean, obviously now we have to oh, like the curves here. Um, ooh, shiny. Yeah, as I said, a bit shorter today. Um, I think... I think this is good, and now we actually do the copy this. No, 
right now we let it run on, on actual fish. And yes, we're going to do the Atlas dance. And this, this instantly becomes more readable. I mean, this doesn't, but uh, if we added the line breaks here, we would have like a gazillion lines and this tool is going to go anyway, so... Yeah, I mean, shall we fix the number? Well, first let's let's push this. Let's push this, so we added this here which is already much better, so improved output formatting for for external tools. And these tools tend to run, run very long, so right now we read it in, let it run, let it run, let it run, and when it's done we output everything, so some kind of live progress would be nice, I guess. I'm not sure if that's that's doable. I mean, it is a pipe, so we could asynchronously read out the pipe, output this stuff, and... Not today. I really I'm browsing the documentation again, but I think this is something we're not gonna get into today. But what I would like to do is, uh, and kind of bonus bonus, bonus fix number of assets build output. So right now we have the zero here, and this is not helpful. I mean, the thing is, right now we cannot be 100% on spot because some of these tools might output more than one output file. For example, the shop, well, the shop not, but the marketing overlays or the the... GUI creates two, but at least get the ballpark number right. So, and we always set this return code here is the number of things we've done. So, I'm, I'm going to be uh, number of assets updated. And just, I'm not sure why there's white space here. So this is this is one spot, and and basically the the tool uh, the tool asset the copy here can can do the same. And obviously we need to fix this once we copy more than one. Um, and here we do an error. unhandled asset tool command and yes we need to fix the error handling in general but and uh, basically do the same here but I want to keep this in my clipboard So right now it assumes one external command that succeeds that creates one asset, which is kind of kind of fine for me, so I 
and we set this also so and I want this mutable so we can count it up in the loop and then at the very end very end we return the number so all of these so hmm. okay let's do a bit of error handling so n and that basically says number of assets updated plus equals n and then we have the arrow case e and there we just do nothing for the moment right so Oh, yeah, obviously at the very end, then we have to do kind of the same. This is a special case, so if we do nothing here, it should still work because it's calling just calling the external tool. And this is gone, so all we want to do is match. I'm not sure where the gigantic white space comes from. And and this block basically is the same. We need better error handling, and then the main just says, hey, number of files. Where does this number of files come from? Oh, that's already, okay. Oh, this is doing the wrong. Wrong conversion right now. Eight assets built, so. That sounds about right. I mean. Where is it? Oops. Eight files, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it's lying. But the ballpark number is right. And I'm not sure how to how to transfer as long as it's a Let's let's at least mark this that this number is, is ballparkish right and not completely right. So the thing is uh, it's calling an external tool. Yeah, I have the, the safe twitch. The safe twitch. So it's calling the external tool here. And there is no defined way of how how does it get the number of converted assets? There's no defined way of, of figuring that out right now. I mean, it could look at all the output files, timestamp the output files, or, or do a directory diff, or too much for right now. And and all of these tools will become internalized into this tool anyway at some point. So then this will not be calling bin shell anymore. This will be calling internal Rust code and that can just return some information. So I'm kind of okay with having having the ballpark numbers here. So if I run this on fish now, Eight as it's built. Oh, I did run it on fish before, so it's kind of kind of I I, I will let this count and say stage this uh, fixed output of up 
updated asset count. And that's a hack. But, but, we're kind of getting there. <coughs> we are reaching the 90 minutes mark and I said I'd do 60 to 90 minutes today. So that was 90-ish minutes. And we made some nice progress, I mean, all the images for fish. If you, if you look into fish real quick, I mean, basically, this is working. This is rust now. Well, this could be rust now. Technically, we're not, we're not using it yet. And this is rust. So... We're making good progress. I mean, the fonts will be super hard. Uh, the other stuff should be kind of doable. I mean, for the scripts, we need wrappers for the wrappers anyway, because we're calling Lua. Config will be a bit dirty, so should be pretty straightforward sound. Shaders and sh shapes will be interesting, but the the fonts and the actual atlas. I mean, right now we're cheating, right? We're using this uh, built atlas, which internally just calls the old old tool. It just has a new interface. So, mm, but but we're kind of getting there. So, so yeah, I like it. I like it. Let's let's do one final test, actually. Let's do one final test. If my window opens up, where's my Xcode? Where is my Xcode? I don't know where that window came from, but let's do a clean build, build it up. <coughs> zoom, zoom. Um, no, no. I mean, there's still some arrows in there, especially in the in the scripting. <sighs> yeah, I don't care, but it built and let's see. And it's working. <laughs> Let's play some fish. That's what you do on Switch, right? You play games. Uh-oh. Coins. Coins. Ooh, the funnel. Which coin? Which coin? Down there? No. Magnet. No. Ah. It's super buttery smooth on the real device, so... It's a simulator right now that's kind of glitching. Fish loves rust. I wonder if I should put like on a, wait a second, I want to big rock. So I wonder if I should put the rust station here, the rust symbol and just, can I do that? I have to check the copyright. I mean, Fish is using rust now, so it would be a nice, nice shout out to the rust team if it was there, right? And I actually want to re-implement the animation system right now anyway, because as you have seen, um, probably no, let's, let's not, let's, 
let's do this content fish and just do this so it it's funny because um the whole animation for the fish is done in spine and then we export single frames and then we do a frame by frame animation and i really just want to load the spine file hey thanks Vo Vo oh sorry if i mispronounce it vovan lots of lots of vocals in a row vova vova Vovan MN. Sorry, I tried. Um, but thanks, yeah. Uh, I'll do more of these. Um, so I want to get rid of this, and this is actually the shape file. So this is comes from the physics editor, and we did this once, and I don't like this because we have polygons, we have splines of this, so why are we exporting to, to frame-based and then re-exporting? That's kind of silly, uh, isn't it? And then the same for stuff like um, nice for cutting off the folder names here. Pickups. Same for the coin. I mean, this is this is rendered in Blender, and then yeah, we probably cannot do this in Spine. Maybe if I make this window a bit smaller, it looks half as ugly. So yeah, it's it's kind of the engine can do 3D. So there's no reason to not just have this as a 3D box circle thingy with a texture so yeah however let's and and um i'm actually researching right now cuz cuz the original stuff was done in was was done in spine and i'm looking into into dragon bone or creature Right now, I think Creature is the one I'm going to go with, but uh, let's wrap up this whole Rust story first. Rewrite all the all the converters because I don't want to. Uh, I want to get rid of these. The the whole Ruby stuff, the shell scripts, the the more Ruby hacks. Actually, that's one of the better ones. Then then actually, there's there's. <laughs> We started to rewrite them in Swift at some point. Uh, more shell scripts, more Ruby, more Ruby, and and this should all just be OMT something. And ideally, it should just be OMT asset and then run, go, done, bye bye. So, yeah. If you don't have any questions, I need. I'm getting hungry, so I need to grab some food. Uh, depending, did, did I tell you this story about yesterday? Do, do you want to hear it? I I don't want to tell it, but I will anyway. So, as you remember, Saturday big family party, so so lots of food, no sleep at all. So I came back home on Sunday and started to do a short one to two hour stream, ending up to doing four hours of streaming and we was i was super happy yesterday because we got did a lot of progress and then then i went to my favorite pizza place because it was super late and i was hungry and it was closed so i ended up running through half the town to find a pizza so i came back here and and put my pizza here on the put my pizza here on the side of me on my windows laptop it's 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 a windows laptop so put the pizza there, started to open my mail here on my Mac, had the slice of pizza in my hand, was reading my mail, and um, that's where I woke up four hours later. Still with my pizza in my hand and still on my desk, and I'm not going to do that today. So, no way. Falling asleep with pizza in my hand is... Uh, there's another story, but I'm not going to tell this today because this kind of had happened to me before um 
Yeah, and then all this hard coded stuff inside the the tool. Oh, dra drag and drop, really? Nope. How did I? How did I drag? Ah, okay. Um, hard coded magic numbers, and I was young and needed the money to get the game done. Mm. So yeah, so step one, get rid of all of this, and and I think with with this actually, I mean this is still experimental, so this is kind of testing the waters, but I I'm feeling like this is going somewhere. This could be it. So lots of stuff to do, obviously, but. Let's wrap this up and then do the three do the fish animations and actually actually there's another uh there's another fish thing coming up which I don't want to talk about on stream, but it's gonna be great. Want me to play with or without music? Funny thing is, uh, I did this tune. I did this tune in Garage Band. Can you even hear me over the music? And when I uploaded a fish video to YouTube, I got a takedown notice because somebody claimed he owns that music that I created. Um, took took two months to to solve that. So I hope that doesn't happen again. I'm not gonna. So how far can you go in this game? Well, you can go forever. No, the, the biggest I did is like 5k and the initial version had some telemetry and one guy... Yeah. Ooh. Oh, okay, that's the add module, so just a breakpoint, no crash. So, oh, ads are working, nice. Money, 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 well, not really, but was more experiment. So initial version had some telemetry 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 in it. And there was this one guy who actually went thirty kilometers in one run. And I guess then he ran out of battery. I as I said the biggest I did was like five thousand meters. And that was when I was hunting a bug. But it's very relaxing with there was a background changing its color and yeah, this game turned out really, really nice, and it was just a proof of of doability, basically. Can you do a game over a weekend? And well, that weekend was quite some time ago. So I definitely need food. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna gonna visit Paradise City later for an hour or two, but I can't promise. So thanks for being here. Um, I probably uh, will do one more coding stream tomorrow. I mean, I have no party plans or anything, and then it's back home to Barcelona. So short stream sometime tomorrow. I have no idea when. Depends on the chaos out there. I mean, the world will end, so shops will be busy, and let's stop the blubber. Um, yeah, so see you soon, and bye-bye.